Hello, good morning. <clears throat> Sharing some ideas. When you compare the cinema or the theater between two worlds, you have the Western world, predominantly Christians, minority Jewish, to the Muslim world. What kind of difference are you going to find? You don't find the difference. It's because there is a big difference, that's why. The Western world, the cinema, or the movie theater, because the theater is very successful. In the Muslim world, there's no, there's no theater anyway. This theater is just, uh, some people are playing there, but there's no theater. Cinema, maybe one of the last in the world. It's the last. Why is that? By the way, I'm sorry, what does it mean, cinema? Cinema is, uh, you know, we portray roles or speaking about the theater. You know, we play a role. You have performance. There is a performance and there is a spectator. You have spectators, they watch. So they are very good actors, performers. Whether it's in the theater, whether in a cinema, movie theater. So what do we mean deeply, in other words? Let's just dive a little bit deep. They know how to simulate a role. They know how to simulate a role up to the point that the passive viewer, we say passive because he doesn't have any kind of analysis. He is giving himself. Maybe in the beginning he finds certain resistance if something is abnormal, but later on, that's it. He surrenders to the role when it is not, when it is abnormal, it becomes normalized. He will accept it. So it's a world of simulation. We simulate a role up to the point to make it believable, acceptable by the spectators. This is what is the cinema. We don't want to hear that. And when you compare to the Muslim world, Arab world, maybe you find it a little bit in advance, a little bit, huh? In the Middle East, where there are Christians as well. North African countries, they are the last when it comes to the cinema. We are not criticizing by putting someone down or up. We are analyzing. What is behind this? It's a big question mark. Leave it aside. In the beginning of the 20th century, <clears throat> 19-ish, 20, whatever, 20s. It was noticed by this type of observation by experts. The movie theater became more sacred than the church. Talking about the east side of the United States. More sacred. The movie theaters Broadway theaters, shows, whatever, Broadway shows, there were more people into that, paying like tremendously a certain amount of money to go to watch, to see, to go to the theater. At the same time, people were not completely, 100%, but abandoning the churches. You know, where they go Sunday to the church. We noticed that in the beginning of the 20th century, there was that there was the uh, migration of some people from Eastern Europe. These are Ashkenazim. Five of them who directed Hollywood, who created Hollywood. Then the West, there was a very big influence from the West, Hollywood. And the East, 
is the sunrise. Actually, it's the sunset. Getting back to our question, those people who are directing Hollywood, it's a theater, it's why people, those people became so into, like devoted to the movie theater, to the cinema, up to the point that every single person, not only there, in the world, they want to become actors and actresses. They want to perform. It's always going for exhibition. Now, again, we have to leave this aside and go to the transit from why these people were, as I said earlier, predominantly Christians, into these sort of like transfer, lovable transfer, transit. It is as if you say, we couldn't find anything in Christianity, didn't offer anything except the word or the doctrine of don't worry. Then, hey, the theater became an extension to what we found as a dead end. What is about Christianity, by the way? <clears throat> Christianity is... The Christian is, according to the miscreants of Christianity, is... We don't go that far. We just say it is always... We are transferring something to someone, which is the fabricated Jesus, peace be upon him. A miscreance, not exactly how Jesus, the mission of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So there is always a transfer of respect. Don't worry. God sent someone, his son, to die for us. Don't worry. We have always this in our mind, looking about the Christian world, that the don't worry is a sort of platform that is supporting you in case if you fall. It is giving you support in case if you fall. Don't worry. There is always this sort of platform, as I said, very thick in the name of religion. That's going to support you. You are thinking about an eternity. Don't worry. Someone is for us. Someone he died for our sins, he's our savior. And consciously, when we speak about the doctrine, this is deeply inside the Christian's kit. His born is always having this idea that there is someone, don't worry. This transfer of responsibility, of consciousness only in reality, it goes. It's always going out going out after a certain time why Hollywood became so successful someone came to give them to leave this world of simulation what is the link world of simulation so far in Christianity we see only the transfer don't worry someone came to us to give us those roles or what's supposed to own emotionally, what we're supposed to own, we don't have the, we don't feel it. We feel only the transfer. Here comes someone who offers us those roles, those perfection, these images, images, quintessential image, utopian image. It's in Hollywood. We character, we picture a character, perfect character. And here comes, you know, what is how the passive viewer, he will be like totally brainwashed without realizing it. Now, as I said, why in the Muslim world, there is no such a thing the cinema is the last. The movie theater is the last. 
There is no platform to support the rule. If you lie, you're going to get quickly. That is a disclosure of the lies. Does that mean that the others are lying? Oh, we don't say this. We say they are simulating, but the word lies is a kind of harsh word. In a Christian world, as I say, the doctrine is always supporting don't worry. The role of a Hollywoodian on a subliminal stimulus is always giving a person this illusion to see, to live those roles vicariously. I'm going to give you a small example. You have the performer, call him a performer in a movie theater, call him an actor, call him maybe not an actor. He's playing a role of where Romeo and Juliet or probably another role that where he can make you sad. You feel this sadness, even though you are a spectator, you don't live those. You live them vicariously. He displays, the performer displays roles in the air. It's visualized. It is simulated. In the air, he doesn't accept, he does not really own those qualities or not qualities, wherever he is simulating something, he makes it believable, acceptable, up to the point that there is in himself, there is no doubt about the product that he wants to sell. He believes in his product 100%. He should not back up. He should not have a moment of reflection or a moment of analysis or to scrutinize. No. You should know what to sell. Well, I'm not selling anything. He is selling himself. The reason why you see the, totally the population is into to impress. Self-esteem. Don't try to back up. Don't try to have doubt in your qualities, in your uh, talents, faculties. You are, don't worry. It's always this. The performer plays a role Simulating a role, it's in the air, like this, look. I don't know. It's just like air bubbles. These are soaks, look. And here you have, it's in the air. The spectator is absorbing those roles, qualities, then if it's a matter of being or feeling sad, he will feel sad. Because he is living those roles vicariously. If it's a matter of being happy, he will feel happy. But what it is, is this. It's a holographic image outside. Where is holographic image normally? It should be the results of the self. My image. Here it's not like that. It's visualizing a character, a perfection, quintessential image. In the air. As, is, as I just gave the example of these, those bubbles. And then the spectator is absorbing those roles, he feels that. Vicariously is leaving those roles, then subliminal stimulus. How this is how it affects the spectator, whether in a movie theater, whether in a opera whether in at home but he is always in a passive state passive state his analysis is diminished lowered little by little now how what's going to happen later on those air bubbles this is like a perfection they will be absorbed by the person in the back of his subconscious you may think well, we are just watching, so what's wrong with that? We are old, we have watched, and we still watch, we know that. The thing is, those emotions, they are outside. They are extrinsically stored inside. Extrinsic interiority. What does it mean? 
the whole world is a simulation. You know, when a person wants, there is an emotion. What is an emotion? Emotion is the whole package of archived, encoded memory, which includes, you know, snapshots, you know, whatever, everything, taste, plus all psychological, you know, involvement archived inside the, in the, in the back of the person's subconscious. Let's say we call it compassion. The compassion is there. If a person has, is in a situation where he, ha he has to behave with compassion, compassionately, he makes recourse option to a uniform gets back and wear it and then behave with it. When he borrowed it in the first time from the world of simulation, it became stored extrinsically in regard to his neural of the core of the me. That's a super ego. They call it in psychology, these are not my words. Well, I say in French, le sur moi, it's something outside. He behaves compassionately. All of these are, he behaves gallantly. He behaves generously. He transports. When you have a whole world like this, but who is giving people why Hollywood had a role, not in a cinema, by the way. Hollywood had big role affecting the political arena. Political philosophy, public policy, affecting every sector of industry in the world, in the United States, and you have the world being westernized. Where is it coming from, by the way? Yeah, we just said it. No, we didn't say it. We, were, we are still scratching the surface. You know, go back, go, go, go back. You know, the magicians did the same thing during Moses' time, alayhi salam during Pharaoh's time. You know, populations in the world, they like to live simulation. The one who comes to give them that, some people are experts. They know deeply about these things to brainwash the population subliminally. So, the magicians, maybe you think when you read the Bible, the First Testament, Second, whatever, even if you read the Quran, you read it as one, uh, one thousand and one night, that's what it will give you. You want to read it deeply, think about it, it will give you all the resources. I'm not talking about the first and the second because everything is modified. You think the magicians, they were just the black magic or maybe the sorcery, even though there is a slight difference between the two. You may think like this. No, 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 no. Pharaoh was a big administration with a very stable administration back then. How to enslave the whole population, you cannot imagine. You know, they have, people like to live this world of simulation, this kind of self-aggrandizement to create a territory in their mind. Me, this. That territory belongs to Fir'aun. Do you know what I'm saying? What the magicians were doing to people, they give them the illusion that these roles, these qualities are theirs, like this. Sorry. And population was, yeah, they thought probably it's actually even though they were stored inside their mind, but they were extrinsically manipulated by someone from outside. Getting back, as I said, to Moses with the magicians. Why that day of the contest between Moses and the magicians in the arena, gladiatorial arena? When they came, if you listen to people's interview, that's the Quran. People, the whole nation went there. Well, if they couldn't be present physically, they were watching TV. Try to understand me. 
They ask, they say, all of them. This is the Quran saying. People, they were with patriotism, with brainwashed to the point that they could, they, they were not looking for the truth, for loyalty. They were brainwashed, that's it. They say, we may fire, follow the magicians if, we might follow them if they were the victorious, if they win, if they won. So it wasn't a matter, they don't have any logic. They were following them is this, because they bring them victory or to satisfy the illusions they have been living with. You know, when Moses came, Moses was raised, by the way, in that administration. Call it a white solipsistic palace. Yeah, he was raised there. He knows what's going on. And don't think this is a kind of joke, what we are saying. No, 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 no. Understand how to interpret it and to see its reenactment in our present days. He knew that people were living in their super ego, super, they don't know, subliminal, the whole administration was like that. When he came, the first thing he verbalized to the magicians, he said, who to you? Don't lie about God. You know, when a secret agent Today, the whole population are secret agents anyway. They spy for who? They spy for nobody. But in terms of being brainwashed up to the point that they no longer know that they were lying. They no longer know that this word is a word of simulation. They no longer know that those holographic images that they see or they want to absorb vicariously they were not an origin, they don't have an origin, they were visualized by the performers. Because a secret agent is, if, you know, he is indoctrinated, when he is sent somewhere, by chance he's caught by the enemy, they can't get the reality, the truth from him, because he no longer knows it. Why? When you see the lie, you fabricate a lie, they teach him how to find the justification to that lie, not to have this palpitation or difference in heartbeats or nervous system. Don't hesitate, you are right. You have a right to do that. What you're doing is right. It's a deep training anyway. They teach them like this in case, if he get caught, as I said, he can leap over the polygraph, in other words, to beat the lie detector. Because he believes in his lies. That's what happened to Phil before he collapsed. There is no hesitation. So Moses, peace be upon him, he knew about this. He knew about this bypass, as you call it, or call it whatever you want. He knew about it. So what he said, he attracted because all of them were dominated by Phil's power, nationalism. You know what I'm saying? He said, who to you? Don't lie about God or when he destroyed you. The liars they have, they end up with failure. So he mentioned this and he articulated it to them. That moment, there was an hesitation. So what had they did? Quickly, they tried to intimidate him and say, Will you three or shall we three first? Imma an tulqiya wa imma an nakuna nahnu al-murqin. Qala alqu. He told them through. But they threw, they threw their ropes and their sticks. All of a sudden, we know the story. They became reptiles, you know, swifting, crawling on the ground. They scared everybody. You know, when the Creator asked Moses to throw his... You know, his cane, it became a large, big reptile, and it swallowed. In the interpretation, everybody thought probably it swallowed everything. Actually, it didn't swallow everything. It swallowed the fakery. It swallowed the simulation, this. 
It swallowed only that it kept the ropes and the sticks on the ground. The magicians, all of a sudden, they realize the platforms that it, they were lying on, they were air bubbles, there was nothing, they fell to the ground. The ropes and the sticks, they remain on the, on the floor. This is what really struck the magicians. They posture when God described them. You know, they fell down with prostration. You know the word, it's different when you say to prostrate voluntarily and you fall down with prostration. This is how he described them. He described them, they couldn't stand, that's it. And the whole population was watching the same thing. Look what Moses did, peace be upon him. And don't think it's a joke or probably comes up like this. No, 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 no. And he chose the day of the festival. It was his choice. He said, Dhuha is the beginning of the day. The minds are fresh, not the end of the day. If you want to have a meeting, do it during this time. Could be productive and fruitful. Don't wait at the end of the day to make a meet, to have a meeting, to hold a meeting. The whole population realized that everything was a false platform. Why we are talking about this? Those who study this, the self-aggrandizement of Fir'aun. Haman, the second personality, which is an ego defense mechanism that gives a slack to Pharaoh to continue his invasion. And Korah, who is originally from the children of Israel, banking system, supporting the regime and directing it behind the curtain of bamboo. Exhibition. The population was all like that. Those who understood this, these are those who are manipulating Hollywood and are manipulating the Christian world. That's how it is. Earlier I said <clears throat> why the cinema is very successful in the Western world, because it has back up to deaden the shock or to amortize. C'est un amortisseur to amortize the falling of these simulations. They resist. In the Muslim world, there is nothing to resist with. It's a fake is fake, you fall. That's why they couldn't stand at all since two, God knows, two third centuries. They try to simulate, they fall. They try to simulate, they fall. That's what it is. It doesn't resist because the oneness of God that is existing intuitively in the person, it will eliminate itself those simulations. Unlike in a Jewish mentality, no, it has a resistance because of the false doctrine of miscreants of we are at the top, chosen. In the Christian world, it's a désistement. It's a transfer of the mind that goes and it goes that far to be recuperated in Hollywood and then transferred to New York in a movie theater. And you have the whole country living in a world of simulation. Listen, it's always pleasure. And uh, I guess thank you for listening. And I see you soon.